With both Gasol brothers departing the NBA and returning to Spain, this is the end of an era. Throughout their careers, they've always played in a unique way, and at their peaks, both of them were top 5 at their respective positions. The greatest brother duo in NBA history. Back in the day, a lot of NBA fans had a negative perception of European players, especially European big men. We used to view them as being soft, but the Gasol brothers changed that. They were physical, they were rough and willing to bang in the paint. Yet at the same time, they still had the finesse and soft touch that most European players are known for. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today, let's talk about the Gasol brothers. How good were they actually? How did they differ from each other, and what made their skill sets so special? Anyway, let's get started. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. If you like the content, drop a sub or a like, and thank you so much for the support. Starting with Powell, I think it's safe to say he's had the better all-around career. Individual and team success, he's had a taste of everything. Right when he came in, he made his mark as a rugged post-up player, who had great range for a 7-footer. Unlike his brother, Powell was an offensive powerhouse. You give the ball to him in the post or at the top of the key and he'll get you a bucket or create a play for others. He was reminiscent of a young Kevin Garnett. His mobility, the way he can score was insane. But unlike KG, Powell came in right away and looked amazing. He was so agile. I guess it makes sense because prior to the draft, it was believed he could play four different positions from shooting guard to center. And no, I'm not joking, fans thought of him as a 7-foot wing player, due to his exceptional ball handling and dribbling skills. Kinda like how we saw Kevin Durant years later. While I think Mark was more known for his passing and defense, Powell was no slouch either. Among power forwards, he was routinely in the top 10 in assists every season. While he didn't have the range of Dirk Nowitzki or the all-around versatility of Kevin Garnett, Powell's playstyle was inspired by both. Funny enough, early on in Memphis, the critics in the media accused him of being a slow, weak defender, someone who got bullied easily in the paint. That was somewhat true, but in reality, it wasn't that bad. So I feel like those baseless assumptions were due to stereotypes. A few years into the league, a scouting report was written by Jonathan Givoni and Matt Williams of Draft Express, and this is how they described his game. Gasol was their primary low post threat where he utilizes his terrific touch to knock down jump hooks with either hand, show excellent footwork on his drop step move, beat guys off the dribble facing up from the mid post, or even get flashy with a pretty running hook shot. He has a quick first step and is very fluid and agile, allowing him to read defenses and react to what his defender throws at him, and improvise intelligently. But then, they got to the negatives, most of which referred to his defense. Gasol lacks the bulk to defend some of the heavier back-to-the-basket matchups he'll encounter at times, giving up position in the low post and getting out-muscled. He lacks a degree of intensity and hustle closing out shooters and is not the fiery type who will throw his body in harm's way. While defense was a major weakness in Memphis, that can be attributed to the fact that he was carrying the team every night. He led the Grizzlies to the franchise's first ever appearances in the playoffs. Unfortunately, they did not win a single game in either series. To make matters worse, the Grizzlies front office wanted to move on. They failed to attract any noteworthy free agents, and Powell had no help his entire time there. And so, the Grizzlies traded away their first homegrown star in franchise history, a trade that was heavily criticized at first, but in the long run, the fact that they got Marcus on the deal, it was worth it. It was in LA where Powell improved leaps and bounds. His weaknesses turned into strengths. Remember how he used to get abused by stronger guys down low? Well, Powell put on over 20 pounds and was now holding his ground. It was a perfect fit right from the get-go. Kobe was getting impatient and frustrated with having no help. And the same with Powell, it was a pair made in heaven. The Lakers experimented with Powell at center. Since Andrew Bynum was injured a lot, Powell had to fill in a lot. It was a position he shied away from in the past due to his lanky frame, 
but in LA, he dominated. He continued to put up exceptional numbers as his game progressed even further. Powell grabbed the most rebounds of his career, including offensive rebounds too. Because he now played closer to the basket, his efficiency increased as well. The results were exhilarating. He wins the 2009 NBA title. Uh, what another tremendous performance. Kicks it out to Odom. Odom throws it ahead. The Lakers repeat the LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. Perhaps one thing people seem to think is that Powell's career dropped off quickly after his second championship in 2010. But that's not true. Sure, he had some injuries, and he didn't fit in with the whole super team saga with Mike D'Antoni. But when he got traded to Chicago, he turned back the clock. Once again, returning to all-star form. Then, in San Antonio, he was still a valuable starter up until his late 30s. He doesn't get enough credit for that. His longevity was insane for a guy of his size. Seven-footers tend to have shorter careers, yet Powell was an exception. He concluded his NBA career as a six-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA, and two-time champion, including multiple medals in the Olympics and Eurobasket, two Olympic silvers in Beijing and London. Before we summarize all this up, let's take a look at Mark. Like I mentioned earlier, if there's two things that Mark has over Powell, it's his defense and his toughness. Unlike his brother, nobody ever questioned Mark being soft or fragile. He was never perceived as lanky or weak. He was always a beast of a man. Mark actually had to lose weight as his career progressed to increase his speed and movement. On Memphis, he was part of the patented Grit and Grind Grizzlies, a team notorious for wearing down their opponents with slow-paced physical play. They beat you down from the inside. Marcus Gasol and Zach Randolph were the key players who this team revolved around. Randolph's bruising playstyle in the block, combined with Gasol's court vision from the high post, created such a deadly duo. Plus, on defense, Gasol always made up for Randolph's shortcomings. Mark's impact went way beyond the box score numbers. When he was on the floor, he routinely had the highest offensive rating out of all Grizzlies starters. That says a lot, because the grit and grind Grizzlies were always a piss poor offensive team hovering around the bottom half of the league in offensive efficiency. In Mark's time in Memphis, on average, he'd improved the offense by roughly 6 points per 100 possessions. Additionally, he'd also have the highest defensive rating on the team too, even better than Tony Allen. It's not always reflected in his individual defensive numbers either. For example, here's how an article from 2015 described it. According to SportView data on NBA.com, the Spaniard is allowing opponents to shoot 50.7% at the rim, and he's facing 6.8 shots per game in that area. Are those particularly impressive numbers? Nope, not really. However, that's not really his role on the defense. Players like Roy Hibbert and Larry Sanders are supposed to protect the rim at all costs. But Gasol is a more versatile defender. He's constantly helping out other players by rotating and shifting his position, and his goal is to steer the defense as far as possible from the rim. Some players are great individual defenders, but Mark was a great team defender. He doesn't need to average an exorbitant amount of blocks or steals, he just needs to direct the defense in a way that his team can stop his opponent. It was the same with rebounds too, Mark would box out a lot, but he didn't grab as many boards himself. That's why his rebounding numbers were always a little bit underwhelming. But as long as his teammates got the board, that's all that matters. Compared to Powell, Mark had the edge on defense. Heck, he even won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2013. Mark was never as good of a scorer as his brother, in fact, his scoring was very inconsistent nowhere near the same level of dominance as Powell. Mark played off instinct. He wasn't carrying the Grizzlies like Powell was. Although, he did have some seasons in his later years in Memphis where he actually did carry the team. Like in 2017. Mark's impact translated over to Toronto. The trade for Mark at the 2019 deadline was the final piece for the Raptors to go all the way. 
Sadly, it seemed like his career dropped off quickly after leaving Toronto, before finally heading back to Spain. So, how good were the Gasol brothers actually? Well, Powell played in an era with many dominant power forwards, and I'd put him in the second tier behind Duncan, KG, and Dirk. At his peak though, he was right there with them. A top 5 power forward in the league, and on the Lakers, between around 2008 to 2010, there was a real argument that he was the best power forward. As for Mark, I'd say he was a top 3 center at his peak, even if his stats were not eye-popping. Everyone knew from the eye test he contributed so much. He finished his career as a 3-time All-Star, 2-time All-NBA with one title. It might not seem like a lot, but both players were so special, with a skill set that people were not used to seeing. Most importantly, they destroyed the reputation of the soft European big man. Their success opened the door to NBA teams more willing to take a chance on European players. Although, it doesn't work out all the time. Anyway, that's all folks, let me know your thoughts on Mark and Pal. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.